I'm focusing on the driving force of modern radiation oncology of the technology and this is the dose delivery technology for instance proton therapy is something which we will have new in the next five years within the UK and the second major player I envision is MRI guided radiation therapy where you integrate an MRI scanner directly with the dose delivery system. There is um, a very specific place in the UK in Clatterbridge who are treating um, uvular melanoma, inner ocular tumors with protons of very low energy. And this was actually the first clinical facility or clinic-based facility in the world who has done this since 1989, I think. Now that um, the NHS has decided to fund two facilities uh, with the 250 million uh, pound budget, there will be new proton facilities at the Christie's in Manchester and UCLH in London. Then there will be a privately funded uh, facility in Oxford, also a multi-country facility. And furthermore, it was recently announced that there are three uh, single-room facilities uh, in smaller hospitals also put up by a private initiative. This technology is important for certain very specific tumors which only very few have been identified. One of the major uh, tumor site groups is pediatrics because proton therapy will reduce the integral dose uh, delivered to a patient when a tumor is treated by a factor of two or three. And specifically for young patients, that is very important for the induction of secondary cancers in order to reduce this risk. This is the physics. If protons are shot into your body, you can control the energy of the protons. Uh, and the energy determines how far these protons penetrate into tissue. And because there's no dose behind the dose falloff, there's a characteristic depth dose called the Bragg peak. That means there's low dose at the entrance and where the particles stop, there is quite a bit of dose. And uh, this peak, if you tailor it directly into the tumor, then there is no exit dose and therefore there's less integral dose when you compare it with photons. The Christie's in Manchester is planning to treat in uh, 2018 and UCLH uh, one year later. I think in the moment it is very similar. It would cover in the order of 1% of uh, the radiotherapy patients treated in the UK. Um, so it is estimated both facilities will treat about 1,500 patients. Uh, per year in its full uh, operational status. Um, with respect to Europe, it's um, quite uh, diverse in the moment. In Germany, there are, is a heavy iron facility running and two proton facilities, or even three now, they're really developing. But this is one of the countries where you have most of the hadron therapy. In the Netherlands, there are four initiatives who are planning to have new facilities, but they are in the planning stage. Um, there's also something going on in Sweden, a facility will come soon. I think overall is we are in the right direction to figure out what is the most uh, clinically appropriate treatment site for these very sophisticated radiation therapy technologies. The magnetic MRI-guided uh, radiation therapy, yes, this is something uh, completely new because what we need to know, and that is also true for protons, and unfortunately that is not that much developed there either, that we have to see what we want to treat at the time of the treatment. And in the moment we have X-ray-based uh, 
technology at our linear accelerators. And for many clinical indications, we just see hazy electron clouds. But with an integrated MRI scanner, we can see extremely good soft tissue contrast. We can do imaging all the time. That means there's no extra radiation burden for the patient. So we can uh, determine the motion, organ induced, uh, breathing induced organ motion, for instance, and we can adapt in real time our treatment to the variations of the anatomy. And I think this is really new and will be a step change in the practice of radiation oncology in the future. Well, it, it's always um, in radiation therapy, as in radiation oncology, we want to opening the therapeutic windows. So if you are reducing side effects, then that gives you the opportunity to dose escalate and to improve tumor control. And this balance is the therapeutic window will open. And to what extent and for what clinical indication it is best to be used has to be figured out by clinical studies in the clinical system. Yes, the initial investment in hardware for protons is expensive. Um, for the MRI-guided uh, radiation therapy, we are doing this with the so-called MRLINAC in the UK, um, which is introduced through a consortium of seven international partners. So we had to pay a nominal price, but just for this uh, uh, for, for this specific arrangement to translate this into the clinic and demonstrate its clinical usefulness. Uh, so the final price, of course, of these technology depends always on how uh, broadly they can be disseminated. You know, in the moment, we are among the first seven sites for the MLNAC worldwide, and yeah, these are unique uh, systems. But uh, I can envision in the order of five to ten years that, at least for the MLNAC technology, it can be very compatible in price to a high-end system or maybe in a factor of two or so more price. So. This depends on how valuable we can demonstrate this technology is. In order to, to exploit these investments in uh, the hardware delivery, uh, the dose delivery systems, uh, it is absolutely necessary that we have state-of-the-art software components which interlink, for instance, treatment planning software with dose delivery in order so that we can take images while the patient is treated, use this information in real time to re-optimize our treatment plan, and then deliver this re-optimized treatment plan with the hardware system. So this feedback loop has to be fast and smooth, and there one needs excellent software modules. Yeah, it's, in, in my view, it's very important that these um, highly advanced radiation therapy technology centers work very closely together, share a common infrastructure, data exchange, design clinical trials uh, under the appropriate leadership, depending on uh, what clinical site it is and which hospital is the leading uh, facility in the UK in order to, to coordinate this trial's best.